All right, so here's the question. Ladies, I know if you're over like around 50, I know you probably often wake up in the middle of the night, so hot you actually feel like the furnace, maybe soaked in sweat. It's a big problem for thousands and thousands of Hoosier women. So this morning we are talking to the sleep doctor for some helpful advice on how to fight those hot flashes and actually get some sleep. One of my all-time favorite doctors is Dr. Abhinav Singh. He's joining us live this morning from his office in Greenwood. Dr. Singh, it is so good to see, see you. First of all, I want to dive right in because, um, and this affects me, I'm just going to admit it. I wake up every night at midnight or 1 a.m. I'm so scalding hot, and then I can't get back to sleep for at least an hour or two hours. Do you think this is a big problem for women my age? Most certainly, you know, menopause is associated with um, dropping estrogen and progesterone levels and hot flashes are almost experienced by 50% or up. Sleep disturbance is experienced by 50% of women. Unfortunate, but that's the reality. So you're not alone. Okay, so we're not alone, but let's see what we can do to make it better. Why do we wake up um, a few hours after going to sleep? And t Can you explain like what's happening in our body as far as temperature and that kind of thing goes? Absolutely. So there are two pieces to the puzzle here. The first is the mind and then is the body. So the first thing is, as we all age, naturally, our ability to get consistent, uninterrupted sleep reduces. There are more awakenings just by virtue of aging and our sleep machinery starts to experience that inconsistency. Second, with dropping hormone levels, especially estrogen, which actually controls our body's ability to react to temperature. So when that goes away, our thermostat, which lives in the brain, the thermostat gets very sensitive to slight pressure, uh, sorry, temperature increases, and then it reacts by a hot flash or a sweat trying to cool you down. So it, it's a very sensitive thermostat in the presence of dropping estrogen levels. That's why the hot flashes happen. Oh, it's, it's a blast too, especially when you have to get up and go to work. Okay, so you have several tips though that we can use to try to get us through this transition. It starts with that regular sleep schedule. Let's talk about some of the things you say that you just can't do anymore. Yeah. So, you know, a regular sleep schedule is so important. Bedtime, wake time. The body doesn't know weekend from weekday, right? So your internal organ systems, especially the brain, which controls your sleep-wake rhythms, doesn't know whether it's a Monday or a Saturday. So a uh, good bedtime, wake time is so important. Sunlight exposure in the morning, very important. Avoiding, you know, nicotine, alcohol, caffeine late in the day, heavy meals late in the day, avoiding those will help your natural sleep, sleep rhythms do better. Yeah, I want to talk about that daytime. I've been hearing a lot of about this now. Daytime and daylight, like the first thing if you can do in the morning is to like get outside for like 10 minutes. Can you explain that phenomenon to me and why now so many people are talking about that? Yeah, so daylight or sunlight is the most nourishing element for your body's own circadian rhythm. All of us have a 24-hour sleep-wake rhythm and it's, it, it's ignited or it's energized with light. And in the daytime, in the morning uh, hours before maybe 10, 11 a.m., you know, for someone who gets up around 7 usually. In the evening, light has the opposite effect. If you have a lot of screens in your face, bright lights, LEDs, they tend to suppress your sleep rhythms by suppressing your body's release of this hormone we call melatonin. All of us know about it. So that is sort of the trigger to initiating your sleep cycle. It's the it's the uh, you know symphony orchestra conductor, not the symphony, but the orchestra conductor. Okay. So melatonin is suppressed by light uh, in the evening. I should have gotten more. I mean, uh, planned for more time. I, I didn't get to get through everything. I know we're out of time, but you said absolutely do not look at your phone. Do not look at the clock. That is a bad deal. And then also there are things that you can get, like a hormone replacement that could help a lot of women. Real quick. Yes, three. Yes, yeah, so very quickly. So hormone replacement can help with heart flashes, but because hormone replacement has certain risks, so it's a great conversation to have with your doctor whether this is correct for you in terms of risk benefit. Don't look at the clock is one of my favorite pieces of recommendations because what happens when you look at the clock at two in the morning? Are you excited about going back no, to sleep or are you out. angry? Frustrated. Yes, it starts a frustration <laughs> cycle. Nobody sleeps better by trying harder. You know, many of my colleagues in the field say this. No one sleeps better by trying harder. You sleep better by trying less and letting sleep come, come to, to you. you. All right, yeah. Dr. Singh, love you. Good to see you. Indiana Sleep Center, fox59.com.